that have come from far and wide to pay their respects? Sure. Uh, we've been here since the uh, queue started to form here on Wednesday afternoon. And if you think of the emotion, it's probably being shared by someone in the queue, the thousands, tens of thousands of people who have been coming through. Um, many people have said that Queen Elizabeth II is very aspirational to them, someone who they looked up to, someone that they put on a proverbial pedestal, while at the same time it struck me that people were also calling her uh, familial, that everyone talked about her as their mother or their grandmother. So you sort of see a dichotomy between someone who is out of reach and yet someone who is so close at hand. And I think that's what uh, was able to connect the tapestry um, between being someone almost nearly godlike, I think I've heard her referenced as, to someone you could hold your grandmother's hand as if. And Ramey, we know tonight is Tonight's event is only for the Queen's children. Saturday night, Prince William and Harry and the rest of the grandchildren will stand vigil around the coffin. Why are they two separate events? Sure. Uh, right now, uh, for tonight, this is an historic event called the Vigil of the Princes. Uh, this is the second time, actually, that it's happened for Queen Elizabeth. The first time was actually in Edinburgh at St. Giles Cathedral. Uh, and, of course, uh, the Queen uh, did pass away in Scotland, and that's why that happened there. Uh, it's significant also because uh, just following the tradition of history, as this has happened, it's separated for tomorrow, specifically for the grandchildren. Uh, we know that likely around this time tomorrow we'll see a similar affair with Prince William uh, standing at the head of the coffin, Prince Harry standing at the foot, and the six other grandchildren uh, standing all around. And both Prince William and Harry will be in uniform as requested by the King. Yes, exactly. Uh, we had earlier heard that uh, Prince Harry would only be wearing a morning suit, uh, but the king said that uh, Prince Harry would now be allowed to wear uh, military attire. This is not so much uh, affording him a special dispensation. It's actually, as uh, in the words of the palace, uh, affording a matter of final respect to Queen Elizabeth herself. And Remy, what else can we expect at, at tonight's event? Uh, will there be readings, what will the ceremony look like? Uh, basically, the ceremony is, is what we're witnessing right now, uh, something solemn, something quiet. Uh, we may see the immediate uh, uh, family of Queen Elizabeth uh, bow their heads. Uh, we may see them uh, uh, stare ahead, just probably lost in their thoughts, thinking about what's happening. You know they actually haven't had very much time to process all of this. Imagine if one of our own family members passed away. We would have the time to digest what's happening, but they have to have uh, basically what's happening to them personally broadcast as we are mm -hmm. uh, around the world, as well as um, a seed to the throne. So this is a special time for them to take that 15 minutes, uh, perhaps in their thoughts, uh, to try to say a final farewell there. And then we have the mourners, as we're watching right now, have lined up. That This line started uh, forming on Monday before the procession started um, a few days later. Hundreds of thousands of people as they walk by the coffin. Some you can see are just quiet in their thoughts and others have been emotional. Um, there is a 24-hour wait at this time for people to come in. We know they paused the queue for a little bit, uh, what do you expect to happen in the, in the coming days? Well, in the coming days, I think a lot of people are going to be wondering if they can make the queue and how long they can actually stand. Uh, we saw the wait time jump from 11 and a half to 12 hours on the, um, uh, the, the Lying in State app tracker, jump from 12 hours to 24 hours. And I think that is going to test a lot of people and make them ask, how much can they stand, especially through the night? Tonight is yeah. probably the coldest night that we've oh, seen mm -hmm. ever since the summer uh, has, has waned. And, and Ramey, are people sort of bringing sleeping bags? I mean, they are expected to be there overnight through the cold. Are you seeing people set up tents or what sorts of arrangements are people making, uh, you know, to make it through the night? Sure. Uh, bottom line is that uh, they don't have the time to 
pitch their tents or to put down sleeping bags because even though it's more than a five mile uh, stretch, even though it's 24 hours now, they will still keep on moving um, mm -hmm. continuously. So there's no possibility for wow. them to rest. Perhaps more than a few minutes if there's a bench or so. I saw some people out here earlier <laughs> sitting exhausting. down, <laughs> yeah, hitting their legs, uh, trying to stretch. But uh, yeah, there's no place for them to stop for more than a few minutes. You have to keep moving all night long. All night long. Yeah. Ramey, we know you spoke to the city's mayor earlier this week. How does he feel about the spotlight being on London? Yeah, you know, as a mayor often should, he's concerned for the welfare of his um, of his people, of the residents of London. Uh, I asked him what his biggest concern was, and it was for the safety and security of everyone here, everyone in line. He was talking about how there were more than 1,000 so-called stewards who have been deployed all across the line in case anyone needs help, in case anyone is struggling. Uh, there have actually been reports already that more than 400 people have fallen ill in the line, some people fainting, falling down, some people actually uh, suffering um, uh, head injuries because they've fallen down. So these people, these stewards, are looking out for people out there. And in um, traditional British fashion, they've said, um, we'll take you away, uh, give you a cup of tea, and then if you're well enough, to put you back in line. And Ramey, when are we expecting the king? Is he, ex is he expected any moment now? And what sort of security measures are being put in place specifically for him? Sure. Uh, well, looking at the time right now, local time, it's 7.45 p.m. We had been advised that he was supposed to arrive at 7.30 p.m. to start uh, the vigil of the princes with his siblings. We did see the motorcade earlier on, so we may just be waiting for some kind of protocol or for some kind of security clearance or maybe even a changing of the guards as well, as we've been seeing over the course of the past few days. And just to bring our viewers up to speed right now, we are watching mourners um, pass the queen's coffin as she lies in state as the world is mourning her. And within just moments, we are expecting to see King Charles III and his siblings. They're going to be coming in here to Westminster Hall to hold their vigil tonight. Again, this is just for King Charles and his siblings. Tomorrow, the grandchildren will have their turn. Eight grandchildren of the queens will hold vigil we know that Prince William will stand at the head of the coffin with Prince with Harry at the at the foot of the coffin. They will both be dressed in uniform. And again, we have been watching for days now as hundreds of thousands of people have been lined up in this queue. Um, it was momentarily there was a pause there because there were so many people. We've seen famous faces like David Beckham come through. We've seen yeah. just you know just about everybody. Right now. We're hearing some sounds there from Westminster Hall. I wonder if that's an indication that King Charles is about to yeah, enter. Yeah, it, it would it would be about time. He is a little bit late, which is unlike the uh, <laughs> and I the think monarch. Here is oh, the procession of King Charles. Let's listen.
you've been watching King Charles III and his siblings, Princess Anne, Prince Edward, and Prince Andrew, holding vigil for about 15 minutes for his mother, for their mother, at Westminster Hall in London. They stood silent as they surrounded her coffin with their backs to her coffin, interestingly, mm -hmm. um, as members of the public as well paid their respects. This is just one of the events leading up to the Queen's funeral on Monday. We want to bring in CBS News foreign correspondent Ramey Innocencio now, who joins us. He's been outside watching the mourners file past. And Ramey, it was um, such a, a poignant moment when we saw King Charles as the mourners were going by him. And there were a couple times, and I'm sure you saw it on the feed as well, where mourners would pay their respects and then look up and there's the king. That must have been quite a moment. Sure. The transition that we're seeing now uh, with history unfolding, the fact that the now deceased queen and their new king are in the same room at the same time, for those 15 minutes, no doubt that was a very special time for anyone bearing witness, anyone passing by uh, during that small window. But. Uh, Looking at this through the lens of everything that's been going on, there's so much ceremony uh, here. Just the, the history of what we just witnessed, the vigil of the princes, has only happened uh, for the deaths of two other people ever. Uh, and it's only started just in the past hundred years or so, back in 1910 for King Edward VII. Uh, and then after that, um, uh, we saw it with um, the Queen Mother, 2002. Uh, so this is something very, very, very special um, that very few generations ever see, maybe only once in a lifetime. And we do know that this was just for the Queen's children and that on Saturday, the Queen's grandchildren, including Prince William and Prince Harry, will do the same thing, stand vigil for 15 minutes. And the rest of the Queen's grandchildren, she has eight in total, um, will do the same thing. What can you tell us about some of the ceremony that we just witnessed, the significance of them turning their backs to the coffin and facing outward? Clearly, it's very specifically choreographed. Uh, you know, what do you know about the specifics of that ceremony? Sure. I mean, this is following tradition uh, that has been happening uh, really for nearly the past hundred years. Uh, they are just standing guard, uh, taking the place of the guards that have been doing this for the past now nearly two and a half days, and paying their final respects, and also showing that uh, uh, this is a passing of the proverbial torch, especially for King Charles, because now he is the leader of not just the country, but the family. Uh, Queen Elizabeth II was the matriarch for so long uh, during her reign, and now King Charles is the patriarch. And so we're seeing this in terms of uh, the, the passing of an era uh, and the significance that it is being shown uh, to the rest of the United Kingdom and other world. Mm. Ramey, as the Queen lies in state for the world to mourn, what do the next couple of days leading up to her funeral look like in the country? Sure. Over the next few days, uh, we will continue to see mourners file past. Uh, the line still stretches at least five miles long uh, with a 24-hour wait, uh, so we hear. Uh, then we will be looking ahead to uh, tomorrow night when the grandchildren uh, with Prince William at the head of the coffin, Prince Harry at the tail of the coffin, and the six other grandchildren all around. Uh, that will be happening at about the same time uh, as this is happening, 24 hours later. Let me look ahead to Monday uh, at 6.30 a.m. That is when this, uh, the, the, the mourning period when people can file past, does officially finish. And then at 11 a.m. on Monday, that is when Queen Elizabeth's coffin will be taken just across the street, uh, just here right behind me, just across to Westminster Abbey. And then there will be the final funeral for her, which is expected to last about an hour. But that, it doesn't end there. Then her body travels about 25 miles from here, west towards Windsor to the home that she so loved even more so than Buckingham mm -hmm. Palace. Mm, yeah. And that is where she will be interred uh, with um, her husband, as well as with the rest of her family. And so striking to see all of the Queen's subjects in the background in those shots right. with the new king in the foreground and the rest of the Queen's children surrounding her coffin. The pomp and circumstance. The pomp and circumstance. Everything. It's, it's really a spectacle to behold. Ramey Innocencio in London, thank you so much.
We're going My pleasure. To, we're going to take a quick break, but stay with us. You're streaming CBS News, always on. An original CBS Reports documentary. I was entitled to equal pay for equal work under the law. Does the Supreme Court's power need to be checked? Nine Supreme Court justices, five of them said no, she's not entitled. That's not 